Well, hello. I don't know about you, but since ever the uh, ESP8266 and ESP32 came along, uh, my aim is to be able to have an app on my phone and to be able to control my devices wherever I am, not just connected to my local area network. Espressif have given us the solution with ESP Rainmaker, and that's what we're going to explore in the next 10 minutes. So what is Rain Rainmaker? It's an end-to-end -end platform that enables makers, that's us, to realize their IoT ideas faster. And uh, it runs on the ESP32 S2 and the ESP32 C3 so far. And I'm sure many other devices are in the pipeline. Uh, three parts to it. An SDK, that's the bit we, uh, we get to meddle with. Also open source are the phone apps uh, for Apple and for uh, Android and a cloud service to make it all work when you're out and about. But also, interestingly, it has a local option as well. So you can use it on your local area network without the necessity to be connected to anything outside. And it has a bunch of utilities uh, to help you along the way and it has Alexa and Google Voice Assistant built in as well. So a really broad number of features that uh, we've all been asking for, we all want, uh, but most of us, well, me anyway, uh, aren't smart enough to be able to do without an enormous amount of work. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first of all, let's just uh, have a look at the, uh, the big picture. So Espressive has kindly provided us with uh, the API to work on the ESPS2 and C3. Uh, they provided us with the cloud and they provided us also with the app to go on your phone. Um, sadly, not the phone themselves, but uh, hey ho. Anyway, let's press on. Uh, most important thing being Wi-Fi provision and control. Need to download the app from the link. Sign up uh, for an account is just an email. They don't want your birthday and color of socks, so you should be good. Then we're going to set up the host environment. Um, you can do it um, various ways. Uh, you can use VS Code, but I prefer the command line. It's the simplest and quickest, and that's what we're going to do today. So here we go, just copy and paste. First of all, you need to clone the repository. Hit return, and it installs really quickly. There you go, all done. Now we turn to building and flashing the firmware. Um, very straightforward. And um, first of all, we need to change um, directory and get into uh, the example that we're going to use. In my case, uh, I'm going to do the, uh, the LED light that is built onto the ESPS2 and the ESPC3. Uh, and I can't spell examples, so we'll try again. Right, first thing we're going to do is uh, set the target, which is the ESP32, in my case the C3, since they kindly sent me a sample. And uh, so that's what we're going to see in the example today. It doesn't look like an S2. And as you can see, it configures really quickly. Then we're going to build this example, the LED light. So IDF. Okay, there we go, 11.08. Or 1109 things done. So the next thing we need to do is to erase the flash because the certificate is uh, stored in flash. It's generated when we first run this firmware. And um, as you can see, it can fail. Um, I have found that you specifically need to mention the, uh, the COM port itself, in my case, COM4. So we'll try that with, um, with COM4. Okay, so let's try it again now, and we'll do it with uh, COM4 selected specifically, and it erases the flash. It only takes a, a few seconds, generally speaking. Here we go, all done now. And now the next, uh, next stage is to run it. Uh, so flash it and then run it. 
So IDF.py minus P conf4 flash and monitor. And that will flash it. You have to remember not to put a space between com and four. Which I should know by now, I suppose. There we go, nearly done. Now what's gonna happen? It runs, gives us all kinds of blurb, and now it's gonna generate the private key, and it does take some time. So if you haven't done already, and you think this content's of value, please don't forget to like and uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when the next video comes. And there we go. When it finishes, you get a barcode and this contains the information uh, that you need to scan with the app uh, to get us up and running. So the next thing to do is to grab your cell phone and uh, start up the app that you, uh, you downloaded. Hit add device. Scan the QR code. And now it starts this claiming process, which does take a little time. Um, and then you get to select the Wi-Fi network that you want to use uh, locally. So here's my secret um, Wi-Fi network that uh, nobody should know the password for. Um, so please don't look. So it sends the Wi-Fi credentials up to the cloud, confirms the Wi-Fi connection on the device, connects the device to the node in the cloud, and confirms that. Hits OK, and now we have our LED light. So I'm now going to change the camera, which seems to freeze on this little app, and now you'll take a look at my ESP32C3. What we then have to do is just quickly open up the light, refresh the screen by pulling it down to make it connect, and then you can switch it on and off to your heart's desire. So it's pretty easy to see. It's a very straightforward process. It's taken us about eight minutes um, to get this up and running. Um, and there are many other devices, so well worthwhile um, having a look and experimenting. And again, if you've enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.